Of all the tropical hardwoods, teak's natural physical properties of durability and water resistance are so remarkable that it is widely dubbed the king of woods, and Myanmar teak is considered to be the finest teak on earth. Many of the world's biggest and most indulgent luxury yachts are built with Myanmar teak decking and fittings as a must-have specification. But beneath this extraordinary timber's rich hues lies a dark secret. Undercover investigations by the Environmental Investigation Agency, or EIA, during the past seven years have stripped back the appealing veneers of luxury, respectability and sustainability to reveal that Myanmar's teak trade is rotten to the core with crime and corruption. This is not only true of the blatantly illegal trade into China, but also of the legal trade in teak exported from Yangon ports by Myanmar's government and the companies it authorizes. For decades, Myanmar's military governments have consistently characterized its teak exports as both legal and sustainable. It is supposedly harvested under a 30-year rotation cycle in compliance with the so-called Myanmar selection system in line with annual felling quotas. Yet EIA's investigations show that the biggest players in Myanmar's official teak trade have conspired with corrupt senior officials to cook the books and defraud the state of many millions of dollars annually. In 2017, our undercover investigators in Taiwan met with long-term teak trader Xin Kun Fu, aka Afu, of the Kaiyue Corporation. Afu outlined how his supplier, a man he referred to as the Shadow President of Teak, had conspired with the very highest levels of Myanmar's military dictatorship to defraud the state of timber revenues. This shadow president was Tun Pei Tzu, the man at the heart of the systematic and long-running criminal operation to steal vast quantities of Myanmar teak. Afu explained how Chang bribed top generals and officials of the state-run Myanmar timber enterprise to look the other way as he fraudulently declared the quality of the teak. Afu went on to explain how millions of dollars of corrupt payments from Tun's Chung Hing company went into the personal accounts of senior officials rather than into state coffers. Water Myanmar Prime Minister of the Lock during that time. Fu also told EIA how Tun curried favour by paying for the overseas education of the children of senior Myanmar officials and generals in order to seek patronage if they come into power. Painstaking research by EIA subsequently revealed the multiple identities of the shadow president of Teak, who had adopted the name Cheta Apipatana. As well as his Chung Hing companies in Hong Kong, this research uncovered the network of companies and alliances underpinning Tun's corrupt operation, which spanned Myanmar, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore, and which was centered on the companies Tai Sawat, Northwood, Timberlux, and Pacific Timber Enterprise. It was only with this hindsight that our investigators realized they had already met with representatives of the Shadow President's clandestine network in 2013. This had taken place during an undercover meeting with Gary Koch, a Singaporean firm Wood & Wood. Koch's testimony of corrupt payments to Myanmar officials by Northwood and its network clearly corroborate the forms of corruption alleged of Tun. So whatever you pay to MT goes to their personal pockets anyway? Uh, you can say it's a... Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a good portion, a good portion. Yeah. Yeah.
During the course of EIA's investigation into Tin Pei Zhu, he unexpectedly died in April 2018. However, undercover meetings in October 2018 with Chun's principal business partners, including Gary Ko's father, Kiao Xiao Bin, and Han Zhou Lin, a close aide of Chun in Yangon, further confirmed the scale of Chun's operations. Han Zhou Ling said Tun was able to secure special quotas from government to government contracts. Tun's firm, Tai Sawat, is known to have secured major logging opportunities in Myanmar following meetings with senior Thai and Myanmar military officials in the late 1980s and early 1990s. The taint of Tun's criminal network is not restricted to Asia. Huge quantities of the Shadow President's corrupt teak flows into Europe and US markets in violation of the EU Timber Regulation and the US Lacey Act, respectively. In Europe, Tun's operations used long-term teak trader Luca Rossi as an agent and trustee through his operation of Timberlux in Trieste, Italy. All their EU shipments are now routed through Italy. All to Italy? The biggest teak importers in the US also opt for tons of corrupt wood. The biggest of these is East Teak Fine Hardwoods which has purchased a quarter of its timber imports during the past decade from three companies controlled by Tun and from Taiwan's Kai Yue Corporation. In 2015, EIA released the report Organized Chaos, which detailed the resurgence of multi-million dollar timber smuggling from Myanmar's Kachin State into China's Yunnan province, all carried out with the collusion of state officials from both countries. We returned to the area in 2018 and found lower levels of cross-border trade due to a clampdown in 2016, but with a switch in operations to Teak. Our investigators met with well-connected traders who told us how they were able to take significant quantities of Teak across the land border in violation of Myanmar's law. Then how are you able to get in? You let the customs declaration company handle it for you? <laughs> Currently, most of the materials are bought from Dalau. Oh, now it's all from Rudy. <laughs> In China, most of the smuggled teak ends up in the Chinese market for use in high-end apartment blocks and luxury shops, but some traders use it to supply overseas clients. Myanmar's teak forests have been devastated by rampant over-harvesting, often authorised by Myanmar's military governments as a direct consequence and function of corruption. Myanmar's current government claims it has committed to reform and has put some new measures in place, but scratch the surface and the same structures remain in charge of forestry and timber trade. Most crucially, the Myanmar Timber Enterprise, a state-owned organization and Tun's principal in-country collaborator, remains in place and unable to change.